Steve in Fort Worth, Texas writes, Mr. Paul, I moved from Colorado after 45 years to Texas for retirement. Unfortunately, I never knew you were in Boulder because I've struggled with my system from bad advice, blowing speakers, underpowered setup, wasted money on one of the biggest box stores, and a lot of opinions. Boy, there are a lot of opinions around, let me tell you. To make a long story short, I ended up with BMW uh, uh, CM 10S2s, I never heard of it, powered by a Rotel uh, RB1590, and also have a Furman IT Reference 20i power conditioner. I listen to my music through a PC where I have over 2,000 CDs downloaded to J River, ripped from DB Power Amp in AIFF format, which is a lossless format. Um, also, I love creating YouTube video music playlists, watching to a TV with my date wife, my date or my wife. Hopefully it's the same. <laughs> or don't tell your wife. Um, it's one way we share date night. Okay, there you go. I also listen to Pandora and Sirius Radio through PC. This guy's YouTube channel just caused a divorce. Um, I, so I don't use the preamp for anything other than a pass-through. My question is, can I get rid of the preamp and get a dedicated DAC with balanced connectors, just in my mindset along convinced otherwise? Or what's the or? Is this all feasible? Steve, Texas born, Colorado raised. Okay. And one would wonder, why would you move to Texas after you've been in Colorado? Now, to be fair, my experience in Texas has been driving through the tip of it, uh, through New Mexico, and then going to Dallas and Houston and to their airports. And uh, whew, Texas ain't for me, but I get it. We all have our different reasons. I, our, the president of our company, Jim Laib, he was going to Texas because he could get a lot of land and he's a horse guy. He, he and his wife, Deb, have, uh, you know, horses and tractors and, you know, uh, Texas would be a great choice for him. Colorado turned out to be a great choice as well. So he lives out in a town called Berthet where you can, away from Boulder. Boulder's expensive real estate. You don't want to have horses here. Anyway, we diverge. You don't need a preamp and probably would be better off without one given the way that you listen and how you do it. And I would say about half of our DAC customers don't have preamplifiers. So especially with our new DAC, the PMG Signature 512, that DAC has a built-in analog volume control at the very output. So that noise, any kind of whatever is in the DAC, and it has very low noise and very low distortion, but whatever level that is, as you turn the volume down, all of that goes down together, and that's the right way to do it. But there are many fine DACs out you can pick up, say, pick up a used DirectStream Mark II that has a great volume control. It's digital, not as good as the PMG, but it still works quite well. Whatever you wound up with, get a great DAC with balanced outputs and use the volume control in your DAC. And I think, given your situation, you would probably be better off. Now, for those of you who are crazy like me and don't want any kind of compromise, then yeah, you want a preamp in there and you want a great preamp because a mediocre preamp is going to be worse. You'd be, if you have a mediocre preamp, you're going to be better off going straight through with your DAC. If you have an excellent preamp, you're going to always be better off going with a preamp, DAC to preamp. So it just depends where you draw the line and how bananas you are. <laughs> or obsessed, whatever word we want to use. <laughs> He's crazy. Yep. So, all right. So good luck. I think you're going to be just fine. I, I would go out and get myself a really hot rod DAC, use the volume control on the DAC, and you're going to be in good shape out there in Texas. Okay. If you get a chance, stop by. We ain't that far. Okay. Bye. <laughs>